Gorse is a perennial woody shrub. It is characterized by branches and leaves that end in a sharp spine. They produce a yellow pea flower and can flower for most of the year. Yet the main flowering events occur in spring and autumn. They produce vast numbers of dark seed, which is housed in a grey seed pod. Seed dispersal takes place during hot and dry periods and a mature infestation can produce and disperse 6 million seeds per hectare. Their dark green leaves are waxy, making them hardy in dry conditions, yet also flammable, posing a high fire risk. Gorse infestations can restrict recreational opportunities as well as access to land. It can invade our bushland and outcompete native vegetation, as well as reducing stocking rates in our pastures. It also harbours feral animals such as rabbits and foxes and can reduce land values. Like all weed control, early prevention of the infestation is the best and most cost effective approach. Gorse is a very difficult weed to control, yet hard work and persistence will pay off in the end. Today we're going to take you through a few different options for control of gorse, namely manual removal, spraying, cutting and swabbing, mulching or mechanical control, grazing. All of these options can be used for your integrated pest management strategy to prevent this becoming this. All methods of controlling gorse are best done before flowering and seed set. The key to its control is preventing seed production, dispersal and its germination. A simple method of controlling gorse is through hand pulling. This is ideal for small and isolated plants such as these ones. First of all you need to clear around the base to find out where the stem goes into the ground. Grab as low as you can and simply pull out roots and all. It does have quite a root system, as you can see there. So it's essential that the soil is moist where the roots can come away easy and not break off. For plants that are too big to hand pull, such as more shrubby woody weeds, simply a mattock or a tree popper are good options. I'm going to use a mattock in this case. Take a good swing after you've cleared around the base so you know where the stem is. And then simply leverage it up, not all the way out, but just enough to loosen the roots and pull it up. Another favourite tool of weed controllers working on woody shrubs is the tree popper. How it works, first of all, find your plant clear around the base looking for the main stem as we can see here it's quite a woody stem lift it up as you do the jaw of the tree popper opens simply slot that over the stem as you lean back on the lever the jaw closes we pull down on the lever and we get about 10 times our own body weight and the plant should simply just pull out As you can see, that's quite a successful control method with very little effort by the controller. Pulls it out roots and all provided the soil is quite moist. Using a mattock or a tree popper is likely to disturb the soil, which may encourage weed seeds to germinate such as gorse or other species. So it's really important that we pat the soil back down in the hole once we've removed our gorse. This will also help prevent erosion. The most effective time to spray gorse is when plants are actively growing but before seed set. This is usually spring to early summer or aut after autumn rains. Here we have flowering and the development of seed pods. The seeds are probably not mature as the pods are green and not open yet. When spraying gorse make sure to cover all the leaves and the stems. Care must be given when spraying to ensure desirable species such as native vegetation is not sprayed. 
If unsure, seek professional advice. Avoid spraying near waterways if possible. If not, spray from the water's edge back towards the bank. Adding a marker dye to the herbicide mixture will help you see where you have sprayed. Following your spray program, it is important to inspect the area 12 months after and implement any follow-up spraying as required on regrowth. The cut and swab method, which I'm going to demonstrate to you today, is a very useful method for controlling gorse amongst native vegetation. It limits the amount of herbicide needed, but most importantly, it prevents off-target damage. For small gorse plants, the use of secateurs will probably be sufficient to cut the stems, but for larger shrubs and woodier species, the use of loppers or perhaps a handsaw will be more appropriate. Get your tool and cut as close to the ground as possible. Expose the cut stems and then treat with herbicide. This needs to be done within 20 seconds of making the cut to prevent the sap sealing the wound. Cut material should be collected and removed where possible to encourage native species to germinate and grow in its place and also to remove the seed off site. Where it is difficult or unfeasible to remove controlled gorse, it can be left to rot on site or removed and piled neatly where it can be burnt at a later date. It is important to store piles where it won't smother native vegetation or create a fire hazard. Mechanical removal involves heavy machinery and is an effective primary control method used to reduce the above ground biomass of infestations prior to other control methods such as spraying. The use of mulches and groomers has been successfully used in our region to cut bushes off at ground level and process them into fine mulch. As you can see on the footage, this mulcher is moving through this large infestation of gorse quite quickly, reducing it back to a fine mulch to make it easy for the landowner to implement their follow-up control on any regrowth. This method will not control all plants, but will give you access to large infestations so you can treat more plants with herbicide. By mulching large infestations, you can reduce the amount of herbicide required for follow-up foliar spraying by up to 80%. In pasture scenarios in Australia, grazing animals may help control light gorse infestations. Yet they need to be stocked at high rates so they don't just eat the more palatable pasture species. Grazing animals will especially prefer young gorse plants as the young shoots are soft, making it more palatable. If grazing pressure is removed or reduced, established plants may recover.